Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. As the channel continues to expand, I get more and more questions about the types of projects you should have in your portfolio. I put this video together to highlight some of the important projects that employers expect to see when reviewing your GitHub or your Kaggle. Some might say that these are essential. Each of the types of projects that I walk through shows them something about your capabilities as a data scientist. A quick aside, NVIDIA has been nice enough to give away three free tickets to their virtual GPU technology conference that's happening October 5th through October 9th. This conference uncovers the latest breakthroughs in a wide range of topics, including AI and accelerated data science. Stay to the end of the video to learn about how you can land one of those three free tickets. The first project that you want to include is an exploratory data analysis. Especially if you're newer to data science, this project makes a lot of sense to start exploring with. EDAs show that you're comfortable telling a story with data. The majority of data science is cleaning data, creating pipelines, and doing feature engineering. You can clearly showcase these skills with your project here. I recommend working with some messy data for this type of project. Ideally, you'd scrape your own data or you'd pull it down from an API. The second project is one where you create a classifier to predict a binary or a categorical outcome. A prime example of this would be the Titanic dataset, where you're trying to predict if someone on the ship survived or not. Other examples would be trying to predict if a customer is going to buy during a session or if a team will win a sporting event. Classification problems are one of the main types of problems that data scientists seek to solve on a daily basis. One way to spice this up a little bit is to use the predicted probabilities associated with some of the different types of models, specifically logistic regression and random forest or XGBoost. With these, you can describe how confident you are in your classification of each data point. Confidence in your predictions is something that shows you clearly understand business value. With these, you also want to be very clear about your evaluation criteria. Experiment with optimizing for accuracy, precision, recall, and even F1 score. Be sure to graph your ROC AUC curve as well. Now, one thing I do want to clarify, I mentioned that Titanic dataset, I mentioned some of these other examples. Those are great projects for you to practice and get familiar with and to learn with, but they're not necessarily great projects for your portfolio. These are projects that a lot of people have done. They're very well documented. You want to be doing projects that are a little bit more unique, that have your own personal touch, that are tied to your personal interests. I highlight this a lot in some of my other videos, but I wanted to just throw that in here before we get on to the third project type. The third project is one where you try to predict a continuous outcome. These are more commonly referred to as regression problems. One of the most common problems of this type is trying to predict prices of houses in a certain region. Another would be if you're trying to predict how many views that a given YouTube video would get. On that note, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me out with the algorithm and it helps me to create more content similar to this. Just like for classification, it's extremely important to explain how you're evaluating your success. Maybe you're using R square, root mean square error, or log loss. The way you evaluate your model has a tremendous amount to do with the type of problem that you're trying to solve. I recommend exploring different models and seeing how they perform against the metric that you've chosen. The fourth project is focused on unstructured data. Sometimes we want to use models to group things together. This is more commonly referred to as cluster analysis. Cluster analysis could be looped into EDA, but it's also particularly important when combined with classification. I like to see specific cluster analysis problems as an extension of EDA because I find that this is a slightly more quantitatively focused way to understand the relationships between data points. It's also important to better understand relationships between your features and principal component analysis or factor analysis can be valuable there as well. A good example of cluster analysis is if I wanted to see which professional golfers played similar games. So I would use something like a K-means cluster analysis based on their performance across a couple different key areas of their game. And that would group them together based on how many groups I wanted to see and based on you know the elbow method or seeing what the number of groups with the most differences was. From that, I could use those to say, hey, which type of golfer plays well at a specific course or at a specific venue? And there's additional value created with that. Also, if a new professional golfer comes on the tour, I could tell you which cluster they fell into. 
And that might be very interesting or very valuable when we're trying to predict how well they're going to play over the course of the season. The fifth and final project is where I believe you should focus on some more advanced techniques. I recommend exploring NLP, computer vision, or deep neural nets. This can be stretching outside of your comfort zone, but to me, these types of analysis will be part of the normal data science toolkit in the next few years. If you specialize in one of these areas, I also believe it makes you far more desirable in the job market. A fun example of a computer vision project is I saw someone who built a model that counted every push-up he did. One, two, three. That was kind of fun and interesting. It was relevant to his life. He didn't have to waste that, that brain energy. You could also use some NLP to try and make a chatbot, for example, for a Discord server. Say the 66 days of data Discord server. You know, these are, these are some fun things where you wanna interact, you wanna engage, and provide value to the communities that you're part of. Now, how can you win one of the three free tickets to the GTC 2020 conference? All you have to do is leave a comment below with which session you're most interested in attending. For a list of everything that's being covered, I've linked the session catalog in the description and it's pinned in the first comment. I'll choose three people randomly from the comments and send out the free coupon codes. I hope this video helped you to better understand the foundations of the data science portfolio. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.